The Portfolio Diet is an eating pattern that was created with the primary goal of helping people reduce their cholesterol levels. It was created by Dr. David J. Jenkins, a man who is also credited with the creation of the concept of the glycemic index. In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what the Portfolio Diet is, how effective it is, what it might look like, some pros and cons, and in the end, I'm going to give you my own personal thoughts as well as give it a ranking, because rankings are fun. So let's get started. One main aspect of the portfolio diet is that it's relatively relaxed when it comes to restrictions. A highlight of the portfolio diet is to focus on what you should eat and how to replace existing foods with better ones, rather than focusing on what you can't eat. There are four key components of the portfolio diet. Now, before I get to them, I should mention that there's some inconsistency online as to what the exact numbers of these components are, so just keep that in mind. The first component is soy protein. The portfolio diet recommends consuming about 30 to 50 grams of soy protein per day. The second component is nuts and seeds. The portfolio diet recommends consuming about a handful or about 30 grams of nuts and seeds per day. The third component is soluble viscous fiber. The portfolio diet recommends consuming at least 10 grams of viscous fiber per day with closer to 20 grams being more ideal. Now viscous fiber is a type of soluble fiber that forms a gel when consumed. This can prevent some of the cholesterol that you eat from being absorbed and thus can lower your cholesterol levels. And the fourth and final component of the portfolio diet is plant sterols. Now these are specific cholesterol-like substances that are found in some plants. They're known to have a cholesterol-lowering effect. They are also commonly added in products like margarine. Other than that, the portfolio diet gives standard recommendations similar to many other eating patterns, mainly to avoid highly processed foods like junk food, chips, candies, refined carbohydrates, as well as limiting fatty animal products, red meat, etc. A lot of these things will come as a direct result of you trying to follow the recommended guidelines of the portfolio diet. For example, in trying to hit your soluble fiber goals, one of the best strategies you can employ is to swap out all, or at least most, of your refined carbohydrates or your white carbs with whole grain ones, since they are naturally much higher in fiber. Or when you're trying to get that soy protein in, naturally you're gonna have to swap out foods like chicken or meat in some meals in order to eat more soy and soy-based products. Now the portfolio diet itself recommends the changes that I just mentioned, as well as many others like eating oats for breakfast due to their high fiber content, choosing foods with psyllium added, or even supplementing with psyllium if necessary, eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, drinking fortified soy milk instead of cow's milk, regularly using sterile infused margarine, drinking sterile infused orange juice, and many others. Point is making as many changes as necessary in order to hit those recommendations of the portfolio diet. Now a sample day of the portfolio diet might look like this. Now for breakfast we might have oats in fortified soy milk with a handful of almonds, some blueberries and honey. For our snack we might have a piece of fruit along with some whole grain crackers with some sterile infused margarine for a spread. For lunch we have stir fried tofu with veggies and tomato sauce served on whole grain pasta along with some low fat grated cheese. For another snack we have some celery sticks with peanut butter spread on them. And for dinner we have some grilled chicken with some potatoes, some grilled veggies, a bit of olive oil as well as some sterile infused orange juice. So this is basically the gist of the portfolio diet. Now if this style of eating seems awfully similar to another really popular eating pattern, it's because it is. The portfolio diet is basically a different spin on the Mediterranean diet. Whereas instead of focusing on broader guidelines using a food pyramid, the portfolio diet narrows down on these four specific components, but with the end result being something very similar to the Mediterranean diet, namely a mostly plant-based eating pattern that replaces a lot of animal products with plant-based products and places a high value on unsaturated fatty acids and fiber. So is the portfolio diet effective and healthy? In a word, Yes. Now I'm going to go over some scientific literature. If you don't care about that and just want to skip to the pros and cons, you can do so using the chapter system of YouTube. Just know that the portfolio diet is indeed effective and definitely can be considered a healthy eating pattern. Now there is a systematic review by Chiara Voli, I hope I pronounced that right, et al, that pulls together the data from some clinical trials that examine the effect of the portfolio diet 
on patients with hyperlipidemia, which is basically when you have higher than desirable blood lipid levels like high cholesterol, high LDL, and high triglycerides. This review contained seven trials with 439 participants in total. The overall result of the study is that the portfolio diet resulted in a decrease of LDL cholesterol, or the bad cholesterol, by an average of 17%. It also lowered total cholesterol by an average of 12%, as well as triglycerides by an average of 16% while having no effect on HDL cholesterol or the good one. Now, something important to note here is that all of the intervention diets were isocaloric, meaning that they were intended to maintain the participant's weight. This means that these reductions in blood lipids were not due to weight loss, because weight loss never occurred, which gives even more credibility to the portfolio diet itself. Another important thing to note here is that all of the participants that were following the portfolio diet we're also following the guidelines of the National Cholesterol Education Program, or NCEP, Step 2 Guidelines. Now, these guidelines limit total fat intake to no more than 30% of the total energy consumed. They also limit saturated fat intake to no more than 7% of total energy consumed, as well as dietary cholesterol to no more than 200 milligrams per day. So their diet was created in a way to make sure that it was following these recommendations. Now, this leaves the question as to whether or not we would see the same results if we were just following the guidelines of the portfolio diet without closely monitoring macronutrient intake. Having said all that, it stands to reason that if you're following the recommendations of the portfolio diet as intended, then you're naturally going to be somewhat close to these guidelines anyway. Now, aside from the limited studies examining the effect of the portfolio diet itself, there's also a lot of literature examining the components of the portfolio diet. The most well-known one is soluble fiber. It has been linked time and time again with the reduction of blood cholesterol. A systematic review examining the effect of fiber supplementation, which contained 181 randomized controlled trials, found that it did in fact lead to a decrease in both LDL cholesterol as well as total cholesterol compared to placebo. Moreover, an increase of supplementation by 5 grams per day led to even higher reductions. Again, the main mechanism here seems to be the fact that viscous fiber forms a gel-like substance in the intestine and prevents cholesterol from being absorbed. Now, the daily consumption of nuts and seeds has also historically shown to improve lipid profile, with a systematic review showing a decrease of 2 to 16% in LDL cholesterol, as well as a decrease of 2 to 19% in total cholesterol in groups that consumed 2 to 4 servings of nuts per day compared to control groups. Nuts are really high in monounsaturated fatty acids, which are one of the two major types of healthy and saturated fats. It is a well-established fact that replacing saturated fatty acids with monounsaturated fatty acids has positive effects on the lipid profile. However, the standalone effect of monounsaturated fatty acids on blood cholesterol isn't that well understood, with a systematic review finding a statistically significant decrease on blood pressure following a high monounsaturated fat diet, but not on blood cholesterol. Soy products have also been found to help with cholesterol markers. A systematic review containing 22 randomized controlled trials with a total of 867 participants found that consumption of soy products reduced total cholesterol by an average of 9.84 milligrams per deciliter, as well as LDL cholesterol by an average of 6.94 milligrams per deciliter. It's still not clear whether or not soy protein itself has any standalone benefits, since soy products have a lot of other aspects that might influence blood cholesterol, like their high concentration of dietary fiber, as well as other important phytonutrients like isoflavones. That said, in the context of the portfolio diet, it doesn't really matter where the benefits come from, since the only way that you're gonna hit those soy protein goals anyway is by consuming a high amount of soy products. And lastly, we have the effects of sterols. A systematic review examined the effects of sterol enriched products in the lowering of cholesterol. This review contained 13 randomized controlled trials. This review found that consuming sterol infused products reduced in an average reduction of LDL cholesterol by 12.14 milligrams per deciliter. The highest degree of effect was observed in participants that had an LDL of over 140 milligrams per deciliter, as well as in participants that consumed over 2 grams of sterol per day. 
Overall, the portfolio diet is based on sound scientific evidence when it comes to its primary goal of reducing cholesterol levels. So now let's move on to some pros and cons of the portfolio diet. Now let's start with the pros. First of all, it's really effective in its primary goal, which is reducing cholesterol. Number two, it's backed up by solid scientific evidence with plenty of studies, including systematic reviews. It doesn't just rely on individual clinical trials and studies that might actually have very little or no practical importance, as is the case with many other diets. Number three, I also like that it has specific quantitative recommendations. Having a specific number that you want to hit each day can make it easier for you to focus on the aspects of the diet that you should be focusing on, rather than relying on vague notions like just eat cleaner. And number four, it's not unnecessarily restrictive when it comes to the consumption of other foods. You're gonna have to naturally shift your diet if you want to hit those portfolio diet recommendations, However, the diet itself does not forbid you from eating any sort of other food. This is beneficial both from a physical health aspect, since we know that dietary exclusion is never a good thing, but it's also beneficial from a psychological side, as we never want to think that we're forbidden from doing something, since more often than not, it leads us wanting to do it even more. And now for the cons. The first one is that it doesn't regulate the consumption of other foods. This is basically the last pro that I mentioned, because it's a double-sided blade. On one hand, it leads to more freedom and less pressure while following the diet, but on the other hand, it's still perfectly possible to hit your goal numbers in the portfolio diet while still following a diet that is high in saturated fats, salt, and simple sugars. And now, yes, the portfolio diet does mention swapping out unhealthier foods for healthier ones that are in line with the portfolio diet's recommendations. But when you give people absolute rules to follow, especially as few as four, what you're gonna say is that people tend to focus only on them. And while I don't think it would be that common, it's certainly possible that many people will follow the recommendations of the portfolio diet, as in follow the four main components, but still end up with a diet that is relatively unhealthy, provided that they just eat enough. So that's something to be wary of. The second con is that it's way too narrow and focused. While all of the components of the portfolio diet are great, the diet does not focus on other aspects that can be equally as beneficial. For example, why only focus on consuming 30 to 50 grams of soy protein when you can focus on consuming 30 to 50 grams of plant protein in general. That comes from other sources like beans and lentils. And while the focus on nuts is great, it also leaves out other healthy sources of healthy monounsaturated fatty acids like avocados and olive oil, as well as sources of polyunsaturated fatty acids like fatty fish. I think most people would benefit from having a bit broader guidelines or adding some more recommendations to the diet itself. Personally, I would swap out the 30 to 50 grams of soy protein rule with 30 to 50 grams of plant protein in general. I would also keep the one to two servings of nuts per day while also adding one to two servings of olive oil as well as two servings of fatty fish per week. The third con is that it can get pretty stale over time. Again, this is a result of the portfolio diet being too narrow. Eating soy every day until you die might not be the most enjoyable thing for many people, which is why, again, I think most people would benefit from being a bit more broad with their choices. And the fourth con is that it can be pretty hard to sustain. And I'm specifically talking about that 30 to 50 grams of soy protein per day. Or hell, even if it was just plant protein in general. 30 to 50 grams of plant-based protein is a lot. For most people, this means that one of their two major meals per day, I'm talking about lunch and dinner here, will have to consist of a good serving of plant-based proteins like legumes and soy. And while that is great for overall health, it's not necessarily the easiest thing to do, especially if you're used to a more animal-based diet. Of course, there's no rule that states that you have to eat like this every single day, and most people will have to incorporate a few days per week of more flexible eating, but even eating like that two to three times per week might be difficult for some people, which is why if you're planning to follow the portfolio diet, it's much better to ease yourself into it rather than just jumping into it, as is the case with pretty much everything. To sum up, the portfolio diet is backed up by a lot of scientific evidence. It is 
clearly effective in its primary goal and can definitely be considered a healthy eating regimen. It is, however, a bit too focused and narrow and doesn't focus on other aspects of nutrition that can be equally as beneficial. I think it's definitely worth a try if you're trying to lower your cholesterol levels, although I would recommend most people to modify it a little bit to make it a bit easier to follow. I give the portfolio diet an overall score of 8 out of 10. It only loses those two points because I think it's a bit too narrow and can be difficult to sustain for many people in the long term. That was the video. Thank you so much for watching. What are your thoughts on the portfolio diet? Have you tried it? Did it work for you? Are you thinking about trying it? Let me know down in the comments below. If you liked the video, then a like would be really much appreciated. If you're interested in seeing more no-nonsense nutrition and health videos, then consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.